this is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review and finally we're going to look at the BlackBerry Z30. This is the biggest BlackBerry at 5 inch Super AMOLED display, dual core 1.7 gigahertz CPU and a very stylish look. We're going to check it out now. So everybody's living large these days. Well, except for Apple. They're really not much on making the iPhone bigger, are they? But BlackBerry, they're cool with that. Here it is, the 5-inch BlackBerry Z30. Otherwise, a lot like our BlackBerry Z10 right here, which has a 4.2-inch display. A lot like it in terms of features, camera, display resolution, all that kind of thing. But 4.2 inches for the Z10, 5 inches here. Whereas the Z10 had a kind of boring but serviceable textured black back. Here we get something really neat though. This is, I love this. Okay, I admit I love everything that looks like carbon fiber, race cars, all that kind of thing. It's a fiber pattern on the back here. It looks very nice. Whereas the Z10 was competent but workmanlike, this is a really nice and polished looking device. Curved all around here, very pleasing looking. Metal framing, edge to edge Gorilla Glass. You can see the curvy bevel over here. It just looks like a really nice quality piece. It looks a lot higher quality than the Z10 did. Feels pretty nice in the hand for a 5-inch device too. It's a little bit bigger though than some other 5-inch devices on the market, but let me show you the front face first. Super AMOLED display here. Sorry, we're talking 720p, 1280 by 720. So you're not actually gaining any resolution here by going from the Z10 to the Z30. What you're getting is just a bigger screen, 295 PPI pixel density. So compared to something like the Galaxy Note 3 made by Samsung, that's over 400 PPI, like 441, you're not going to get the same sharp crispness. But honestly, it's pretty nice looking phone. We have the metal chin over here. Some people pick on it, some people like it. I like it, you know why? Because there's so many phones on the market, God knows which side is up, right? Even the Z10, you have to really look for the earpiece here. It's the same, it's got a chin on the top, it's got a chin on the bottom. You swap it that way, you see pretty much the same thing. The Blackberry logo certainly helps a little bit with that, but I like phones where it's real obvious. Just first glance, you know, where the bottom is and where the top is. Speaking of competing 5-inch devices, here's the Samsung Galaxy S4, which looks kind of a little petite, doesn't it? Now, Samsung does manage to make a very small device, uh, as 5-inch devices go, and it's going to be lighter, because Samsung's also the master of using light plastic. So the, the BlackBerry Z Z30, 6 ounces, it feels pretty hefty in your hand. It also feels kind of like a nice, well-balanced, well-crafted good quality kind of heft, not just like, oh my god, it's a boat anchor, but you know, you will notice it. It, it is kind of heavy. In terms of thickness, it's fairly slim. No complaints at all there. So what's new about this device? Other than the larger screen, we have BlackBerry OS 10.2. Now you can download that for your Z10 too, so it's not like you have to buy this phone to get that operating system, and that's a good thing. We like that. Same UI here, the multitasking, each of these is an active card kind of thing. So we have BlackBerry Maps running in the background over here, the BlackBerry App World Store, and the web browser. Swipe this way, you've got all of your pre-installed applications plus anything that you've downloaded. And the story, since we reviewed the Z10 back in March of 2013, sadly hasn't changed too much in terms of applications. You have some strong built-in applications here and for you social networking types. We have Facebook client, we have Twitter built in. Uh, for those of you who want Instagram, no, it's not going to happen still. Netflix, not here yet. Skype, yes it is. It got ported over from the world of Android because BlackBerry did make it easy to port things over from Android to the phone. Doesn't mean a whole lot of great things have been ported over. BlackBerry App World is still kind of a lonely place compared to Google Play Store and the Apple App Store. That doesn't mean there aren't things you can do with this phone right out of the box. Capable web browser, full HTML web browser with Adobe Flash Player, something that is disappearing from the world of mobile browsers. We still have it here. BBM, of course, for you BlackBerry diehards, that's there. Documents to go, so you can work with MS Office compatible documents. Music player, video player, both very capable. Story maker, for those of you who want to make a montage of the things you've taken with the camera. BlackBerry Maps is on board. It's no Google Maps, but it gets the job done. It does a pretty good job with directions, actually. It's just the POI presentation that's a little meh. They have their own games hub. Adobe Acrobat Reader is on board here. So you've got the staples. You've got a QR code reader. You've got a compass. You've got a weather application. Obviously, Evernote's available and comes pre-installed. The YouTube icon right here, that's really a shortcut to the mobile website. That's not a really a special YouTube application. We've got Slack or Radio here, but still we don't have Pandora, and Bing is their favorite partner for search, not Google. 
And for those of you who are familiar with BlackBerry OS 10, you get all of your notifications. There's notifications about phone calls, time zone changes. It's all sorts of stuff. This is not just about your emails that have come in. We now have the priority inbox where it tries to prioritize for you those things that you think are important and put a red stripe next to it. As ever, it's, it's, it's a very elegant operating system. Not everything is perfect. Sometimes I look at some things in settings and I think it could have been done better, but overall, it's a lot like WebOS, which is a beautiful operating system, including the whole card multitasking functionality. So say we want to go to the browser. Just tap it like that. It's maximized. It's going to run in memory again. It's a good web browser. We're looking at our own site, Mobile Tech Review, right here. Good speed. Reasonably sharp text. Again, 295 ppi is not that bad, honestly, even though it's not full HD. But for Android folks who are looking at this, nobody's going to jump on this because of the specs, because we have 720, not full HD, which has become the standard on your $199 with contract smartphone. And what we have in here is a 1.7 GHz Qualcomm S4 Pro dual core CPU with Adreno graphics, quad core Adreno graphics, compared to the 2.26 GHz quad core CPUs we have on Android, that's not going to sound impressive. Now, you know, you don't need to have the fastest processor. This is a highly optimized operating system. It doesn't lag. It doesn't feel slow. The iPhone doesn't have a killer quad core either, but people love that. But still, in a world where you're kind of reinventing yourself the way BlackBerry has been doing, it hurts a little bit when you say, oh, we got a dual core. Even the Nokia Lumia 1520 here has moved onto the world of quad cores. And we'll play a video so you can hear the stereo speakers, which, by the way, fire from the bottom right here. A little hard to see, but there's two little slits right here. Obviously, you're not going to get a lot of separation, but the good thing about being right on the corner is even if it's against the desk, you're not blocking your speakers. Color saturation is pretty good. That's pretty zingy there. It's not as color accurate as, say, the iPhone, but it's a, it's a nice enough looking display. Being super AMOLED, you do get nice black blacks. And you can see here we have our little Adobe Flash Player controls, which can be maddening to try to operate actually on a small device. This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at Nokia's first fabulous phablet. This is the Lumia 1520 6 inch Windows 8 smartphone. Available in four colors. You can see we have red, easy to customize and stylize with. So you see those last couple of little notches in the volume really just open it up a whole lot more. And we swipe up. That's how you multitask in BlackBerry OS. And there I am stuck with my mouth open. Oh well, I don't want to see that anymore. Tap that. That closes the application. So that's actually how you handle multitasking. So you don't have 19 applications that are still running in the background. For BlackBerry Maps, right now we're looking at the Empire State Building. You can do POI searches if you want, but if you take a look at this map right here, right around the Empire State Building in New York City, there's a whole lot of POIs and they're not really shown on the map. When you search for them, they show up. But they're not littered everywhere, so you can't just at a glance say, oh, there's the Starbucks. You have to actually search for it first. Now, going around the device, controls are pretty much where they were on the Z10. We have our volume rockers here, and they stick up a little bit. See how they stick out? I find actually, I accidentally press these a lot when I pick up the phone, but not the end of the world. The center one is launches voice command, which does a pretty good job, and we'll show you that. Down here, this is the grab point for removing the back. We'll also talk about that again in a minute. On this side, we have the micro USB and micro HDMI connector. What looks like a removable door, but there's nothing under there. If you pull it off, you just see some sticky glue. Hmm. Power buttons up top, along with your 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And the back is removable. There's a little pull point on the back right over here. Now, it, it takes some work to get it off. You kind of have to work your way around. There it is, and there it is not. Not a removable battery. 2880 milliamp battery, as it says right here. We have like marketing words right here. Battery is sealed underneath here, so you really can't take it off. Why is this removable? So BlackBerry can sell you accessory covers and things like that that go with this. And this is where your micro SIM and your micro SD card slot are right over here. And over here, remember that little trim piece I told you not to pull off because you're just going to see some gluey glue and a plastic tab? Notice how there's a permanently installed edge over here. Again, so if they make accessories that give you access 
to those card slots, say a replacement back cover, that, that's why this is set up like that. But in this case, if you just yank it off if you want to get to your cards. The Z30 actually has USB host, and you need OS 10.2 to support that as well, but our Z10 with the same operating system did not support it. So that means if you have a USB on-the-go cable right here, it's still a little obscure to find, but you'll find them in places like Fry's and Micro Center and online Amazon. It's a little cable adapter right here. It goes micro USB to female full-size USB, and I have a flash drive attached to this. So I'm going to plug this in, and we're going to have wonderful things happen. Flash drive is flashing, letting us know. And I keep getting a USB device almost full warning when that's not the case. It uh, doesn't really harm anything. So we're going to launch the file manager and see what we can find. So I'm going to switch from device to USB device. And here we've got my documents on here and videos, music, all that sort of thing. So we'll play a little bit of a song off of the flash drive. So there you go, USB host on your BlackBerry. Now it's going to depend on what drivers are available in the operating system as what you can use. That doesn't mean you can use every single USB accessory that works with a Windows PC on this, but flash drives obviously do work. Dialer on this is big and easy to use, as you can see. Uh, we're using the Verizon Wireless model. Currently, they're the only carrier offering this. Rumor says that AT&T will also be picking it up. As you can see, it has 4G LTE. Reception has been good on this. BlackBerry is employing a new kind of antenna that really helps in low signal areas, keeping a strong signal. Uh, and, you know, I've, I've seen reviews that say this has great voice quality and some that say it has crappy voice quality. And I have to say that it's been just kind of fair voice quality for us in our tests in the Dallas area where Verizon has pretty good service. Sometimes they do sound a little digitized, uh, but the phone occasionally sounds a little bit muddy and muffled despite the fact that it has a bunch of nice microphones on it. And incoming audio has reasonably good volume, but mm, just mm, mediocre for voice calls. It's been our experience so far. Data speeds have been very good on Verizon. In fact, been using this solely on their 4G LTE network while doing this, loading web pages, streaming that YouTube video. No complaints there. Good speeds phone has a front 2 megapixel camera just like the BlackBerry Z10 and the same rear camera module as the Z10. You can tap to shoot a picture. You know, it takes okay pictures. If the lighting is really good, they're fine. If the lighting is meh, despite having a fast, fairly fast lens and a backside illuminated sensor, not so great. So here's the UI. We can see normal shooting mode is what we're on. We have stabilization mode. Burst and HDR functions. HDR is a bit slow. You're not going to use that for a fast moving subject like your crazy cat going ballistic like ours does or your little kid running around the house doing something incredibly cute. Not so much good for HDR mode there. For modes we have not a huge selection here. Auto, action, whiteboard, night, and beach or snow for very bright scenes. Notice no panorama mode here. And you can set your aspect ratio. You can do square, you can do 4x3, you can do widescreen format, and you can control the rear flash on it. And obviously switch between your cameras. So, yeah, it, it's, it's okay, but not the greatest. And you can see we can switch to video just by doing that. And it is not focusing very well right now. Probably hard for you guys to see here, but it's, it's getting a little fuzzy, so we'll move away from our friend the bath toy and see if we can sharpen up a little bit. It's still a little bit fuzzy. That's why I haven't been so thrilled with the camera on this. The BlackBerry Z30 has all the staples of a modern day smartphone. It has dual band Wi-Fi 802.11bgn, Bluetooth 4.0, a GPS with GLONASS inside. 5 inch display again is super AMOLED technology. Fairly bright but BlackBerry has this thing where they give you a brightness slider in here. I'll show you what I mean. Slide down, and that's how you access your settings. Pretty similar to what happens in the land of Android. So we go here, and if we want to go to our brightness, see I've got it turned to maximum right now, but this is always with a 
ambient light sensor controlling the absolute maximum and minimum brightness right there. That said, it gets pretty darn bright, but you really can't measure it unless you go outdoors in bright sunlight, where you're also going to pick out a lot of glare. It's bright enough to be seen outdoors, despite the fact it is super AMOLED, which is not the world's most outdoor visible kind of display. The phone has 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of internal storage, and again, it has a micro SD card, so you can augment your storage if you need to. Here's your settings menu, pretty much unchanged for those of you who are familiar with BlackBerry Z10, for example. Straightforward, mostly easy to use. A couple of things are slightly confusing, but all in all, works pretty well. So the battery, as you saw, is sealed inside. You take off the back cover. That 2880 milliamp battery is sealed inside. That's quite a large capacity battery for a 5-inch phone, especially one that has just a dual-core processor and a 720p super laminar display. So as you would expect, battery life is excellent. Now, you know, all along BlackBerry had a reputation for being that phone that just ran forever, and that was easy in the old days when they were running with what looked like basically a color e-ink display and very low power CPUs, but now that we have pretty modern hardware in here, it becomes a challenging feat, and they've really managed good battery life with this device. Huge battery, not too demanding internals. I don't think anybody could kill this in a day unless you're going to be using this as a GPS for a seven-hour road trip, honestly. It, it should last the average user probably two days on a charge. If you're a heavy user, when you go to bed at night, you, you'll, you'll charge it, but honestly, great battery life here. As always, BlackBerry's QNX based 10.2 operating system, very robust, uh, pretty bulletproof. I haven't had problems with crashes on this, to be honest. Also quite good for security. And you get other business-minded features like the new improved priority hub for your messaging. And also you get a full version of documents to go view, edit, and create MS Office compatible documents. Beyond that, you know, if you're a BlackBerry person or you work for a BlackBerry shop, obviously this is going to be a phone of interest. In a perfect world, I think a lot of people would like this phone. The multitasking is charming, even if it is overly derived from WebOS. The hardware is very pleasing. It feels nice in the hand, nice soft touch finish. It looks like a quality piece of hardware. Nobody's going to look at that and say, oh, what a piece of junk. You look at it, you say, I would like to use that. Big screen on it, even if it's only 720p. It's pretty nice for watching videos and looking at photos, but BlackBerry has just lost so much market share. That's the hard part. Whether the operating system is wonderful or not, or the hardware is, at, at this point, Windows Phone is passing them by. And, you know, everybody makes jokes about Windows Phone not having much of a, a market share. And the company has been in flux, of course. They fired the CEO, and they're trying to do some turnaround, but they're also looking at trying to sell the company. So the future isn't really clear right now with BlackBerry products. So I would say if you're a BlackBerry person and you want to continue with the OS, I understand. This is certainly the best phone they've made yet if you don't want a QWERTY hardware keyboard on it. But if you're somebody who's using an iPhone or an Android phone, this may not be the time to jump on board with BlackBerry because of the uncertainty of the future of the company right now. And, you know, things could turn around for, for BlackBerry. They could float some bonds. They could get some money and, and continue on. It's, it's not like nobody's using the product anymore. Just saying, it's a little bit difficult right now for me to say you should go ahead and get this over an Android or an iOS phone, particularly because the application story still is a little bit weak on here other than the solid core applications that are built in. Sorry, BlackBerry lovers. I know you're out there. I like the phone a lot, too, but that's what i got to say. So that's the BlackBerry Z30 in the U.S. It's available on Verizon Wireless, and again, rumor says it'll be on AT&T as well. $199, usual flagship phone price, and you know it's a very nice phone and a pleasing operating system, but as you know, I'm just a little bit worried about BlackBerry's future at this point, so it's hard to recommend unless you really are a hardcore BlackBerry person already. If you are, this is a very sweet phone. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to hit that like button.